Hey folks, we're back. Third installment of this. Now, before I put this carburetor back down on the floor where it was, I want to show you something. See this machine screw that's been put in here? Now, somebody disabled this choke for probably some of the very reasons I just said. They couldn't figure out how to hook the lines up or it wouldn't work, whatever the case, you know, but this is typical. Now, they're probably new enough that this would create a vacuum leak, but they didn't have to do that because something I didn't mention in the other clip that I just did was you may have asked this, thought to yourself well how in the world can you have this what I call a metered vacuum leak in this and the other end just open why how is it going to cause the engine to run bad no it's not because that's like I said that's called a metered vacuum leak and uh, that just means that the carburetor is calibrated to take into account for that it's not gonna it's you know that's just the way it is it's richened up a little bit it just they designed it with it having this kind of a choke system so it's already factored in its its calibration and mixture you don't even have to worry about it so that's how that works all right boy i remember this greasy old thing now look at this monster all of you will probably instantly recognize what kind of carburetor this is. Uh, for you, those of you that don't, this is a Rochester 2G carburetor. It's a pretty old design. It started in the 50s. Um, used up through about 78, so maybe 79 on GM vehicles. And actually was used on a couple of Dodge and Plymouth vehicles through the years. It's, good, it's a great carburetor. It's very simple. Um, these were the ones that were used in three two barrels a lot of the time probably about all the time actually but anyway uh, the reason I've got this old thing out here is because simply to show you how to identify a an electric choke unit because uh, you may think to yourself well you've been talking about a hot air choke and all that I don't know if it's you know how, do, how, how can I be sure if it's got an electric choke or a hot air choke? Well, like I said, you look at it. See, this, this one's blank and it's got the tube over here. Well, this one, as we can see, has no tube anywhere. No tube. So, But it has this larger unit here. Element. It's called an element. I, I've not been using the exact terminology but you get the idea and it has an electric plug on it now anybody that has a Chevy 305 or 350 or a Buick 3.8 liter the old 231's and 3.3 and liters and things like that maybe some of the old 2.5 liter Pontiacs and all that you're intimately familiar with this kind of choke system now the way this works like I said in my videos earlier is you know we got a spring in here that you just saw that's what loads the choke closed right that's how it works that, it always tries to keep the choke closed by spring pressure this, this, this choke element so as I reiterate you know you have to have something to heat that bimetallic element that spring up to unload the choke as the engine warms up so the electric choke does this by applying voltage to this element through a wire that connects to this of course and that gradually heats this spring up the same as the hot air did the same you know the, the same end result of it and then it starts to open the choke plate up the longer it goes now I personally don't think an electric choke is quite as good of an idea as a uh, as an elect as a hot air choke because the hot air choke is more dependent on actual engine temperature and this is just basically what it thinks it's it should be doing you know say it's it's say it's got voltage for uh, you know five minutes it thinks well take it off even if the engine's not completely warmed up. So, but that's how it works. It does not have the vacuum orifice in here. Probably doesn't have the seal. It may still have the seal in here. I've not had one of these off in years, and I'm not going to take this one off just to look. Sorry, but <laughs> uh, 
but that it's it's simpler. It's a lot. Uh, I'm, that's not a word. It's more simple than this one to have to use. But like I said, I'm not quite sure that it's a better idea. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about a peculiarity. Um, a lot of folks used to have these 3.8 liter Buick Regals and Olds, three, Olds Cutlass cars and Grand Prix and things like that. And they all use this kind of choke this, they didn't use this carburetor, they used a dual jet which is basically the front half of a quarter jet, you'd see pretty much this but they all used, pretty much all used an electric choke so and you may have noticed that on your, if you ever want to put a new oil pressure sending unit in any of those Buick 3.8 engines you always notice that it had an oil pressure sender had three terminals on it so you're like what the hell's three 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 terminals on there? It took me a long time to understand this, so I want to share with you what that means, what that is, and it's probably used more than just that particular engine. Any of the ones like the Verjet or any of those carbureted early '80s cars probably use the same system. What it is is, you know, you can run one of these direct voltage to it with nothing controlling the voltage. It'll work. It'll heat it up and it'll take the choke off just like it's supposed to. But what GM did is they used the uh, well pressure sending unit as a switch. They used it for the oil pressure as a ground for the oil pressure light, as always. But then they also used it as a switch to cut voltage to this choke helmet if the engine was not running. Now you may wonder why is that? Well, the reason they did that is because they envisioned that there may be a scenario that you get in a car and maybe you want to listen. It's a cold day and you had not started up yet, but you may want to, you know, listen to the radio a little bit. And you turn the key to on, which normally would supply battery voltage to the choke element and start heating it up. But if you sit there with the key turned on and voltage is heating this thing up, then your choke is likely to unwind, to get heated up and unwind before you even start the engine up, depending on how long you've been sitting there doing that. So they don't want that. They want to prevent that. So what they did, like I said, they just, they, they, they said the oil pressure, if the oil pressure switch is, is open, the circuit is open, it will not get voltage to this choke. So that's something to keep in mind. If you ever want to diagnose one of these to see if it's actually getting voltage to the choke like it should be on a, like one of those Buicks or maybe the 2.5 or whatever, any of those has a three terminal 305, any of those that has a three terminal oil pressure switch, it, the engine just about has to be, of course, has to be running uh, to do that because, you know, it'll have oil pressure and the oil pressure switch will close, whatever, and make the circuit. So don't panic if you check and it doesn't have voltage with it just sitting there with the key on. Now you can take the oil pressure connector off the sending unit and jump the two wires if you know which two wires they are. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think the one that's for the oil pressure light is green or brown, but there, you really need a diagram. I'm not going to recommend doing it until you have a diagram. So. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind if you ever deal with one of those old 231s. Uh, people went through hell on those things trying to, if you convert them to, you know, like the aftermarket, well not aftermarket, but like if you put a rally pack in them that had the factory gauges, you know, you had to change the sending unit. And uh, what I always did is I just went ahead and just bypassed that oil pressure switch. I just took a piece of wire at that three terminal switch and uh, I actually cut the three terminal switch terminal off of it and ran the original oil pressure wire to the new sender and then I just connected the two other wires and I just made the practice not to ever sit there with a the key turned on before I started the engine. So that's why that's like that. Let's see if you're ever wondering. So um, what I'm going to talk about next it, this will apply to you, Chad. Sometimes you have, uh, you may run into a carburetor that looks like it's got both of these type of choke housings, choke elements. You have one that has a hot air 
uh, housing like this and it also has an element connector on it like this that's kind of a hybrid and what happened was used to be um, that hot air chokes were popular back in the late 60s and early 70s and you know this was before emissions became so emissions laws became so stringent in, in pollution and things like that so um, if you ever see one of those like I think that 400 that's in your car Chad probably has that 2100 carburetor basically you can look at it like this this is the main method to heat the choke element up but in certain cases the manufacturer wanted the choke to open quicker like if the temperature was above like 60 degrees something like that they didn't want to wait on this thing to heat it and heat it and heat it and finally take the choke off they want to get that thing unwrapped and uh, open off the choke as quick as possible so what's going to happen is uh, when it's cold if it's down like say 20 degrees and you have that hybrid system with the two types of, with all, both the electric and the hot air what's going to happen is if it's like 20 degrees out uh, the electric system there's a switch in it somewhere this is a Mopar Chrysler choke control it does that's what this does this is hooked in line this is gets battery voltage one side of it the other side of it goes out to the electric choke element it's going to the, read the temperature it's going to have a little probably has a bimetallic little arm in here switch or whatever it uses uh, and when it's cold like that it's going to say no we do not want electric assist to heat the choke up we only want the slow opening hot air choke because it's cold the engine's cold it's going to take a long time to warm up so that's that all right well say it's about 65 degrees out the engine's cold it's going to need some choke but it's not going to need choke very long it'll warm up very quickly and be able to be driven away right plus they don't want to take a chance on it sitting there you know running a little bit too rich and polluting the air and maybe clogging the converter up like any of those cars still have a converter but that was the idea so what this thing does is choke control says uh it says, you know, it doesn't say it, but you know what I'm talking about. It's, it looks at it like, okay, it's 65 degrees out here. We need to pop on this electric assist to open this choke up quicker. So we want this smogger engine off the choke as quick as possible. So we're going to kick on the voltage of this thing to get it, get it opened up. Quick, 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 quick. <laughs> chop, chop, you know. <laughs> so that's what that's for that's Chad that's you know I tried to explain that I'm talking to one of my subscribe subscriptions here too um, your car has got a version of this so you know I think I looked it up on the internet that's a, we're talking about a uh, for everyone else we're talking about a late 70s Mercury with a 400 engine in it. it's got I think it's got a Motocraft 2100 two barrel so it it definitely has this system somewhere it's got a uh, it's got a choke controller somewhere and you were having problems with your choke i noticed in your videos it's staying on too long so you know you might have had a problem with this thing not pulling it off or uh whatever but i think it was just all adjustment problems so uh okay well, i'm gonna put this monstrosity back down here now put this to the side we're talking about electric chokes I want to show you something here that controller this is this is a Mopar controller a Chrysler controller this happens to be off my one of my 318's out there Dodge 318 Plymouth 318's and this is the electric choke that goes on that 318 now this is a kind of a weird looking thing if you have Plymouth and Dodges you're very familiar with this kind of deal but if you're not, uh, this is just an electric choke. But what this is, this is what's called a divorced choke. Uh, its wife got mad at it, threw it out of the house. It's, it's living on somebody's couch now. <laughs> now that was silly. Now what a divorced choke means, it means that the, the choke house, the choke itself is not on the carburetor. So this is up on about 15 minutes so i'm going to cut this video off and then we're going to come back and talk about this divorce choke
सही है